It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, October 13th, 2011. I am James Burns. We now go to Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing this afternoon? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, There's definitely uh, some uh, big uh, war drums beating um, over this this, uh, Iranian plot. This, uh, I guess, this Iranian-born used car salesman from Texas is supposedly a mastermind now behind um, an apparent assassination attempt of an ambassador. Uh, this whole thing stinks, Bob, in my opinion. What do you think? I admire your opinion. Of course, it's, a, it's another terrorist black flag operation, false flag operation. It's nothing but lies. And uh, what else would be expected from such a government? And uh, the president is wallowing in uh, an approval rating of around 35. Congress is at the stellar figure of eight, if you can believe that. And uh, now they're thrashing around. They want to uh, uh, have a, uh, another round of bringing money into the country uh, by these characters that, uh, that uh, are called transnational corporations. It's called the repatriation tax holiday. I mean, these people are such scumbags. I don't know how they live with themselves. I mean, it's so obvious they're bought and paid for in Washington. But anyway, getting back to the question at hand, which is, was that for real? This Iranian madman? Of course it's not. Absolutely not. I mean, you think they could get more inventive. You know, when I work with those people, I never bet anybody that was stupid. But obviously, in latter years, they picked out the bottom of the barrel because the things that they do are insane. They, they expect people to believe. And maybe they're trying to start another war. I mean, it's getting close to that time, maybe. And, you know, they keep on holding the stock market up and pounding the commodities and gold and silver. I mean, there's no end to it. You know, what is one to do? Maybe join the army and go fight somebody. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it is an absolute insult to the American people, this latest madness, this creation of a an Iranian madman. Yeah, I mean, I, I see this guy as, at best, you know, another patsy. I, I don't think he has any ties to the Iranian government. And, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me, Bob. You, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while now, you and so many others, about, you know, when the government gets in this situation where they're so disliked by the American people, both parties, the entire government, Congress, the president, and, you know, the, the unemployment rate's skyrocketing. It's getting worse. Plus, you have a whole bunch of, Americans now on the streets right now and all these various Occupy movements throughout the country. And, you know, while the movement itself is most likely, unfortunately, financed by the Soros Group and MoveOn.org, you can't deny the fact that a lot of the uh, Americans participating in these protests are legitimately ticked off. And I, I really do think that the government right now is, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for a nice big distraction. Well, what they can do is say uh, that terrible terrorist, Bob Chapman, who lives in Latin America, is now close to the Mexican border with 500,000 Chinese troops ready to invade us. (laughs) I mean, what next? Here is a 76-year-old, broken-down old man who's going to lead an army of 500,000 into America and subject them. I mean, that's, that's how stupid this is. I mean, it is it is beyond reclamation. It is. And I, and I just, for the life of me, Bob, I just, part of me can't see how they could actually use that as a means to start bombing Iran. But then we, we backtrack a couple months to, what, February, March, when they were talking about uh, the humanitarian efforts over Libya. And I, I honestly couldn't believe that they were actually going to do that as well. But it happened. 
Well, uh, Al Qaeda which is, and Taliban, which are controlled by the United States government via the CIA and MI6, uh, when they went into these towns, anybody who was for uh, Mr. Gaddafi, they murdered them, killed them all, thousands and thousands of them, cold blood, men, women, and children. Incredible. We have a government that's made up of monsters, kill fiends. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the, ironic, the irony here, Bob. I mean, you have um, countries like the U.S. and Israel that have you know, been you know, for too long now killing other people, and yet they want to go after a country that hasn't really done anything to anyone else except for you know, wanting their own nuclear power plant. It's ridiculous. Well, you've got to go back to the flip side of that. Israel wants to control the entire Middle East. That's what it's all about. And they're just an extension of the banking cartels. And I don't know whether the management in Israel has in the past or presently knows that they're just flunkies like everybody else. They just use them for their dirty work. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the truth, Bob. <laughs> that's what the way it's been for too long now, and it's sad that this continues. And I have a really bad feeling that if they do bomb Iran, it's going to lead to something worse, of an even bigger escalation, because right now you have China and Russia and the U.N. They're blocking uh, an intervention in Syria, and they're, they both have ties with Iran. And if Israel and the U.S. do attack and go into Iran, I think this thing could get out of hand real fast. The understatement of the day. That's where it's all headed. It's just a question of when. And we don't know what their timing is, and we won't know until it happens. Uh, we might get something ahead of time, but it all depends on how things turn out in the short term. Over the next two years, maybe over the next three months for all we know, regarding what's going on in Europe and England and the United States financially. And now we have complaints that it's affecting the entire world now. Well, what else did they expect? I mean, they interconnected everything that they could, particularly banking. And now they're in trouble, and they don't know what to do about it. Even if they wanted to reverse the process that they deliberately started in the first place, they couldn't do it. They're stuck. And when these things are finally all over, the wars and the collapse and the pestilence and the starvation and the deaths of hundreds of millions of people, they're going to lose. Because there's going to be enough of us around who are going to be able to round them all up and put them in prison after they've been tried, relieve them of their wealth, and those who have committed treason, like our last president, they can hang him or cut his head off or whatever, you know, just get rid of him. But the public of the world seems to be unwilling to get these corrupt politicians out of office. It's not only in America, it's all over the world. Terrible. It, it's, it's very terrible indeed. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, I mean, I would like to believe that something would happen, something would transpire that would prevent us from going down that dark path of a third world war. And like you mentioned, not just war itself, but everything that comes with it, such as war and famine and disease and death, before the people finally say enough is enough, we're finally going to bring these bastards in. I just, I would like to believe that something is going to happen. I'm trying to be optimistic here that that will stop all this. Well, I'm trying to stay healthy long enough so it can come and join I wouldn't wish this for the world, but it's going to happen. They've got to kick, you know, 75% of the people out of Congress. If they can't do it, forget it. You can have the population functionally illiterate. They don't know them from anything. I saw interviews today of high school and college-age uh, young men and women from all walks of uh, life, so to speak, and they were asked... Uh, do you know who Adolf Hitler is or was? None of them. None of them knew. Unless they interviewed people that they left out. Uh, they had three children about five years old. 
Yeah, about five. And it was sort of like, you know, the old Art Link letter thing where they had the kids come up and they asked them questions. And they had pictures. And they had a picture of George Washington and one little boy knew, oh, yes, that's uh, the father of our country, blah, blah, blah. He had the right answer. And then they had another picture of somebody else and nobody knew who it was. And the third picture they didn't know either. The third picture was Jesus Christ. <laughs> that shows amazing. you the moral fiber of America. And not, not just that, Bob, but the lack of uh, education, the fact that the education system there is broken. And I'm, I'm, chances are they probably did get you know, a whole bunch of interviews. And, you know, some of the kids, I mean, I, I just can't fathom how people would not know who Hitler was. I mean, but, I mean, at the same time, I shouldn't be too surprised with the way public education has gone straight into the toilet. I mean, most, more people care about watching Jersey Shore or some other dumb reality show or a sport, their favorite sports team than actually, um, you know, furthering their uh, learning abilities. My daughter teaches. She has three degrees. She's head of a department. She teaches fourth grade. She's got 23 children in the class. Twenty will not pass. And they'll go <coughs> on with uh, the no child left behind. And in her class, she has two children. One of them's 13 and the other one's 14 in a nine-year-old class. And she doesn't live in a ghetto uh, and teach in a ghetto in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, or any major city. This is how bad it is. <clears throat> this is how stupid these children are. And they get no help at home. Some of the parents don't care. <clears throat> and some of the parents have to work two jobs. <clears throat> they just don't have time. And, that, that, and that's really, really sad because that shows you exactly where we've been going for too long now. I mean, this is something that's not new, not recent. I mean, this, this you know, deterioration of the education system all across the board has been happening for the past several decades now. And what you have is you have people that were kids. They're now adults. And they're – and. As you know, we continue down this path, path of each passing day and week and year and decade, more and more of them that have hardly any education at all are going to become the adult class. And it's just, it really shows you exactly the direction we're heading. You know, they're, they're creating more and more sheeple. Well, I started to get wind of it about 30, 35 years ago because my children were in the school. And, uh, Ever since then, it's been dreadful. And I meet people with PhDs, they don't even know what I'm talking about. Now, people with the master's degrees, what? What's that? I mean, you talk about street smarts, there's a void there. I mean, if they were thrown into a difficult situation, they couldn't survive. They don't have the intuitiveness and, and you know, ability to better a situation out of pure ingenuity. I mean, I just take the Germans and the Americans in World War II. They both had lots and lots of people that made things work that conventionally couldn't work, but they made them work. You don't see it anymore. Don't see it anymore. No, no you don't. And a huge part of the problem is the fact that we've we've gone from being uh, raised by parents because that's that's where the learning and education truly begins is with your parents. They they teach you the first things and go from there. And another problem is this fact that we've gone from being very independent people, you know, learning as much as we can, learning how to do this and do that, you know, change a tire, uh, do an oil change, uh, grow a garden, etc., to being very very dependent on grocery stores. Uh, you know, time at lubes, you know, where you can go and get your oil changed and all this other stuff. And that's made, I think, the population just too dependent on everything. Well, that's true uh, to a sense. And, uh, you know, you hate to dwell on the shortcomings of society, but they're so overwhelmingly in your face. Uh, it, it's, it's just tragic. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you say to yourself, how do you turn? Now, there's a lot of very, very bright, uh, 
industrious, entrepreneurial uh, people out there. And they shouldn't be forgotten. Uh, they probably make up uh, 25% of the population. And they're doing a good job under terrible circumstances, especially the young people who have come out of university in the last 10 years. I mean, with the expectation after spending uh, a quarter of a million dollars on an education in a private u university, uh, that they would get the opportunity to work and get a decent salary to start off with. That doesn't exist anymore. People with uh, college degrees are fighting for jobs against the illegal aliens. You know, driving a truck or a forklift or whatever. The stories abound by the minions. That's because we have something called free trade, globalization, offshoring, and outsourcing. And that is an incentive for two things. To create world government and get their profits offshore so they can have these repatriation legislation where they can bring their money back home at the screwing the American worker. And it all drops to the bottom line for the shareholders, which make up 5 to 15% of the population. I mean, that's hardly fair. And you got, you know, people in, in the Senate coming up with formulas. They should be paying 35%. They want to come in at eight and a quarter. Eight and a half. What, what, what does that cost the American taxpayer? They get $2.2 trillion out there they want to bring back. They're not going to put it in the economy. They're going to buy their stocks again, run them up, and blow out their options and make hundreds of billions of dollars like they did before. They proved it. There were surveys, panels, investigations. We know that's what they did. And our congressmen... And our senators are going to allow them to do that again, and it's going to cost the American taxpayer $750 billion in lost taxation. And their lobbyists, they get 1,600 lobbyists working on this that I know about. I've been told there's more than that. You know, the guys that give a wad of money and say, do you know Senator so-and-so? Oh, yeah, he's a friend of mine. Go over there and convince him that he should vote for this thing. It's awful. It has to be one of the most corrupt governments in the history of mankind. And our previous four or five governments were just as bad. No, this one's worse. But anyway, the point's well made. And they're going to do it. They're going to enrich the rich again. And, of course, all of these politicians will be paid off. It, it, it just keeps going and going and getting worse and worse. I mean, this whole thing, everything you talked about just now, the, this whole repatriation scheme, I mean, it's a scam. The, the, the entire education system has become nothing more than a scam because you have so many kids that are going through college, putting themselves in debt, getting one, two, or three degrees. And by the time they get out, A, they didn't really get an education to begin with. This basically more like programming and indoctrination. And then, like you were mentioning, because of the free trade agreements and, and all these other things they've set up over the years, I mean, they, they're, they're screwed. I mean, you have so many kids right now who are out of college who have these degrees, and there's nothing. And I think that, that, make, that, I think that does seriously make up the core of a lot of these people that are out on the streets of uh, Wall Street and D.C. and Boston, Seattle, all over the place, and – I mean, I think there is. I know. I know there's a lot of people out there that demonize the Occupy movement, and I and I understand that. But at the same time, I I look at the people involved in it, not just the communists or the socialists or the Obama supporters. I look at the the other groups because there's a collage of groups, and I see basically a lot of young students, a lot of angry Americans who realize that they have no real future unless we do something. Well, that's right, and they're going to try to get us involved in the war so they can. Send them through uh, basic training, uh, boot camp, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, in uh, 90 days, they'll be ready to go over and get killed. Wherever they're going to send them. You know, the big lobbying group in the United States is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. 
they are the real bad guys. They're always there with mountains of money from industry. And they have the temerity to tell congressmen that this repatriation tax holiday is going to create 3 million jobs. You've got to be kidding. Got to be kidding. It's not going to create anything except great wealth for the corporation and their executives. Dreadful. I mean, these are the same companies. There were 600 companies where offices within the com companies, this is four or five years ago, took their options out you know, in letter form and changed the dates, changed the striking price, and they got away with it except for one who wouldn't cooperate. So they buried the poor guy. Everybody else got off with a fine. This is the kind of scum that we're dealing with in American business and industry today. Well, everybody didn't do that. But that's a lot of executives, 600, and only one went to jail. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that, that's a small sacrificial lamb right there for them. For the rest of the bastards. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And Bob, since, since you know, I am interested in the Occupy movement, I've been trying to, you know, and there's others out there as well, and the libertarian constitutionalists and the fetters out there, they've been going out there talking to these people, you know, trying to make them realize the, the truth. Like they, they, they've got kind of, they got some of the pieces of the problem, but they don't have the rest of them. Bob, could you, kind of like do a real quick 101 and for any of them that might be listening as to what's the real problem here not just wall street not just the corporations they're part of it but there's more to it the uh pivotal point the catalytic point is the federal reserve owned by 12 federal reserve banks whose shareholders are the old banking families of 100 years ago from both europe and the united states and england they own our Fed Reserve. They are the problem. They give the Fed orders. The Fed does what they tell them to do. Just like in England, it's the Bank of England, and in France, it's the Bank of France, and in Germany, it's the Bundesbank. I, I will say, in Germany, the situation's better. But um, if you speak out in Germany, they kill you, just like they do here in the United States. There was a man that ran Deutsche Bank 20, probably 20 years ago. His name was Herrhausen. And he was against the amalgamation for the cost factor of Eastern and Western Germany, among other things. And uh, they shut him up. They killed him. They blew up his car as he was being driven to his home. And they said it was the Red Brigades. Well, the Red Brigades were controlled by the CIA and the Gladio, uh, which is the undercover organization created by the CIA during the 1940s in Italy when the war was going on. It included all kinds of criminals. Lot, lots of uh, people who belong to Opus D, which is a Masonic Lodge in, uh, in Italy. And, um, no, it's, it wasn't Opus D, it was something else. I got the wrong name there. Uh, Opus D is um, equivalent to, in the Catholic world, I would say the Masons. Uh, not like that, but that. Uh, the name of it is, is the Lodge, the P2 Lodge, that was the name of it. And uh, that was the same group where uh, uh, one of the Vatican bankers, uh, his name was, I can't think of it right now, but he was the head of the lodge. And they found him hanging off Blackfriars Bridge in, uh, in London. And after years, they finally found that he didn't hang himself. He was murdered, and they just hung him over the, the edge of the bridge. Uh, this is the kind of things that go on all the time. You know, people get sick and die. It wasn't natural. I mean, if you're 
within the player structure. You don't do what they tell you to do, they kill you. And so this is what people in Congress are facing too because you don't do what we do want. Well, not only are we not going to pay you, not only are you not going to get reelected, we'll probably kill your family too. We've seen it happen time after time. Look what happened to John Kennedy. He had all the right things to do. Why? Because his father Joe told him. What did they do? They murdered him. And he knew the chances of him getting murdered were excellent. He did it anyway. Yeah, that's a sad reality, Bob. I mean, the the kind of monsters that we're really dealing with. And it, it's my hope. And I, I know there's plenty of people out there that are being negative about the, what's going on across America. And you can't ignore it. But I'm, I, 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 I'm sincerely hoping that, despite the fact there are plenty of bad elements in these Occupy groups that have potential to turn this into a really bad, uh, you know, communist, socialist color revolution. I also want to believe that there are people that are awake, that are starting to wake up, that are part of this, that all you all we need to do is, you know, show them the light and they'll 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 join the cause, you know, because it, it could go either way, in my opinion. No, I don't think it's going to go either way. I think that the people who have become involved have neutralized to an extent what's with the intentions of these people. And as more of these people listen to the Internet or read on the Internet and listen to these programs, they're going to realize they don't want to get involved with something that's communist. And they want to tell people the reason why they don't want to get involved with the solutions that these people offer. And you've seen the tape with the young man, Chris, who gave her a several-minute dissertation on the Federal Reserve and why we should be doing what we should be doing. And that's what we need. More people avoiding, of course, confrontation, particularly with the police, and, uh, and telling people the truth. I mean, what they're offered by this group that controls this Occupy is nothing but Marxism. I mean, read them. I couldn't believe it. They have to be stupid as stones. I mean, they could have waited a while, this manifesto. They gave themselves totally away. I don't have to tell people that they're left-wingers or communists. It's right there for all to see. That's, that's definitely my fear, Bob, is that this Occupy movement is most likely similar to what happened with the Tea Party has become co-opted by the controlled left, just like the Tea Party got taken over by the controlled right. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, I mean, I mean, there were so many people that were jaded by what happened with the Tea Party. And I, I, I get the feeling that this is going to happen as well for a lot of people that joined the Occupy movement under good intentions and good reasons. Do you think that in, in the grand scheme of things, this could actually lead to a, a real movement down the road? Yes, I think it could. But we can't let those people who are running it run it. And that's why Americans have to get into it there, particularly young people and, um, and you know, people under 50 in particular. And say, look, this is not the problem. You know, these are, these are all problems, but it's the Federal Reserve that's behind all this and causes all these problems and is the center of control for the bankers and Wall Street. And those solutions that they're offering over there, they're horrible. That was what was offered to the people in the Soviet Union in the 1920s. I know, I've read all the literature. I, I know how it works. I mean, I was trained to do that. Yeah, I mean, look at history, though, Bob. I mean, look what happened in our own short history in the United States. I mean, we, we had to fight, you know, the first and second national banks and all sorts of hell they both caused. And, you know, our founding fathers warned us about central banking, and yet they snuck in in 1913 and brought us the Federal Reserve. And that, that, you're right. And that is the root of the demon. No question. And, and, and this goes back to education. You know, the, the fact that it's deteriorated so much over the past couple of decades where, you know, most people that are educated 
aren't because of public schooling. They aren't because of the colleges out there. They're, they're educated because they chose to go out there and educate themselves. And one of the things that, you know, because I'm a big history buff, you know, one of the sayings is if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And that's exactly what I see happening. You're right. It's a culmination. In fact, in, in education, they started with Deweyism in 1929. I mean, most people have never even heard of Dewey. But he was the one that started this dreadful trend in education. And uh, I was speaking uh, with a writer and author, uh, Stephen Lenman, on his program tomorrow, this morning, uh, which is uh, Progressive Network. And uh, he had just written a uh, book that I'm sure you're aware of, Yes, yes, I'm going to have him on my podcast coming up on Monday, actually. Oh, that's good. And, you know, we both grew up in the same town, uh, Boston. And he lived in Roxbury, which was a, a rather nice area at that time. And I lived in some of where all the poor people lived. Uh, there were other sections which were, were as poor as ours, but a uh, big difference. And uh, I grew up on the streets. He didn't. And we both got accepted to Harvard. He went. I refused. I went to Northeastern and said, because I felt I just didn't fit over there. And I'm glad I did what I did. But the point is that there's a commonality of interest. We're both the same age. And we've seen the same things. And we have nothing to gain from what we're doing. We put in tremendous hard work just to get the word out, that word being what we're seeing is wrong, and it's got to be stopped. I mean, where do you know we have got two fellows like ourselves, 76 years old, doing what we're doing? I mean, this is a young man's game, let me tell you. But it's so frustrating. You have to do something, especially if you have the educational background that both of us have. Because we've been through it all. We've seen it all. We've studied it all. Just like you, yourself in history. I mean, look at the newsletter writers and radio and television personalities. Most of them might know 10% of what you know about history. I mean, how can they make an informed decision without understanding how these things came about what happened to them and how they eventually worked out over the past 2,000 years. They don't have a clue. So they can never really get their hands on the whole story. And we want them to. But they, they won't be bothered. I mean, it's the same thing. I answer everybody's emails. Everybody else in the industry thinks I'm crazy. I mean, these people need help. All these other people want to do is get paid. I'm not interested in that. So it's a terrible shortcoming, not studying and understanding history. Indeed, and, and that's a huge part of the problem here, Bob, that people have just been so dumbed down with, with the lack of knowledge of history and, well, everything else when it comes to the uh, education system as a whole. And... It's, it's all being done by design. I mean, it's something we've been talking about for, you know, basically this entire show is that it's all being done intentionally by the powers of be because they want sheeple. They want jellyfish. They want zombies so that they'll sit around, you know, in front of the idiot box and do exactly what their, you know, elected officials and what, you know, the, the, the hot girl on the TV tells them to do. That's right. And so all we can do is our part – Sometimes it's very small in helping other people and maybe making people understand uh, why things are the way they are and how they can change them within the structure of law. But, I mean, it's just going to take a long time to really, you know, get some people. And, and I, th I think there is hope because you have a lot more people waking up to the truth and they're passing it along. They're passing it along to their friends and family, even though some of them are obviously not going to listen. They're going to brush them off. But if they, if they have a spouse, if they have children, they're going to you know, go through the, the effort to 
educate them as to what's really going on. And if, you know, if we go on long enough, Bob, you know, the kids will grow up, they'll be educated, they'll have an advantage over their counterparts. And hopefully in time, you know, perhaps, just perhaps, you know, we'll, we'll end up winning the day. I mean, that's my hope, at least. And it, it is definitely, as Alex Jones says, an info war. That's right. And that's all we can win. And, you know, I spent years and years doing this. And now we get a real chance because of the Internet and because of talk radio. And, uh, you know, the first lady, three letters I got this morning were from Germany. This is going all over the world. People understand this, that, that terrible things that are wrong in every single country. And uh, if these countries, these people in these countries cannot find a way legally to set things right for humankind, there'll be revolutions in every country practically. And a lot of people are going to die, but, you know, they should have thought of that years ago. Nobody cared. No, that's the problem. I mean, and, and you see this in this country. I mean, I see it every day that no one really cares. People care more about their favorite football team, about the, um, well, the, uh, the baseball series going on, the playoffs. They care about, you know, stupid shows. I mean, I, I, there's a couple TV shows I watch, but I, I got my priorities straight. I know that in the end, that's just entertainment. That's just for fun. And that's not what's, what really matters. But unfortunately, there's too many people in this country that, that have it all bass backwards. Well, that's true, but it's the world, not just the country. Yeah. And uh, it, it'll always be that way. You know, not everybody has the same equipment to understand things. And that's a drawback, but that's just the way it is. So what we have to do is find out a way to make them understand that what we're doing is in their best interest. Yeah, and- I, I just hope, Bob, I sincerely hope that in time they, they do wake up. Because you know, they, they, they can't all be complete idiots. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of them that are. But, I mean, I, I know plenty of them that, that do have some intelligence. But, unfortunately, they've just allowed for – they've un, unconsciously they've allowed themselves to be, you know, brought under this, this box, this programming. And – I'm just hoping that sooner or later, as things continue to get worse and worse in this country, because as as you've pointed out countless times, things are heading in that direction with the rise in food and gas prices and the unemployment rate continuing to skyrocket. Sooner or later, people are either going to have to wake up and understand the the gravity of the situation, or they're not going to survive what's coming. Well, as I said before, if they don't listen, that's up to them. And it's going to be nasty, and somebody's got to die. And if that's what they want to do, that's what they'll get. It's just like people going in the market, doing stupid things, being told that they shouldn't be in there with their wealth, no matter what the size of it is. And they're going to lose it all. But they won't listen. And that's okay, because somebody's got to lose their money. You know, for every one of us, a loser. It's a zero-sum game. And so, people got to listen. They got to do something for themselves. And if they don't want to do that, there's not much we can do about it. And that's very true, Bob. In the end, I mean, we all have to be responsible for our own decisions in life. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And it, it seemed pretty convenient, Bob, you know, that this whole Iranian thing transpired you know, just what a day or so before uh, the um, uh, the uh, Fast and Furious subpoenas went to Eric Holder, uh, that that seems a little suspicious, doesn't it? Not a little. <laughs> totally. Yeah, of course, it's a setup to divert people's attention, and we're not going to let them get away with it. I mean, these people should all be in jail, including Hillary Clinton. They're all in on it. I mean, this goes back to the Bush administration. This is nothing new. They've been doing it for a long time. But I can't believe the stupidity. I mean, they have to be the dumbest of all dumb people. It's incredible. I know lots about weapons. And I was in the gun business for a while. And uh, 
you know, there's ways you can pick up the kind of weapons you want, and there's way, ways you can get, out, get them out of the country. It's not impossible. It's, it's easy. Yeah, and it's just, it's just sad to think that, you know, over the past three to four years, this, they, they say at least 40,000 people in Mexico have been killed and slaughtered in this ongoing war. How many of those guns were the result of the ATF and this Operation Fast and Furious? How many lives were lost because of firearms sitting in Mexico by our own federal government? Well, it's hard to tell, but some of them were. We, we, we can say that, and we know that for sure. Uh, but guns are readily available in Latin America. You just have to know the right people and the price. And uh, it's as simple as that. And that's the truth. I mean, it, and that just proves how ridiculous it is to try and make guns illegal, you know, for whatever reason. Because people are always going to find guns. The criminals are never going to hand over their guns. Now, 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 the citizens may be compelled to do so. And I think if they do, they're idiots and morons. But that's not going to stop the criminals from ever getting them. Because, as you said, you know, all you got to do is know the right people. And they're not hard to find. Not at all. And, you know, speaking of uh, the situation between the U.S. and Mexico, this is something you've discussed several times, the upcoming elections in Mexico and the fact that uh, this, the bank in Mexico has been stockpiling on some precious metals. Looks like that they're, they, they've got a little bit more going on than our own government. And if, you know, ha, ha, what, what have you been um, gauging lately? Because uh, we haven't talked about this in a while. Is, is, is things uh, going according to plan there in Mexico with the, uh, the, uh, this party that's trying to come back in power and overthrow these other ones? Well, <clears throat> A PRI, which is called Free in Mexico, uh, has a majority in the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate. And the uh, Chamber of Dep Deputies is the House of Representatives in, in English. And uh, I think that they will strongly widen their hold on that. And if for no other reason the violence that's occurred because of the program that was put into operation by the other party, which holds a presidency called PAN, P-A-N. And um, uh, PAN is a, a creature mostly of central and northern Mexico. Uh, it, uh, generally speaking, is middle of the road. Uh, they're in the back pocket of uh, the... U.S. politicians and transnational corporations, and uh, they cooperate fully with whatever the U.S. government wants to do. Um, it's my suspicion, uh, from what I've been told, that this war against the drug dealers is because they want to concentrate the drug business, and these people want to take it over in conjunction with the um, Central Intelligence Agency. And so consequently, uh, they went out on a limb to do this, and they've enraged all of the people in the narcotics business because they know what's going on. And what will happen is, if you notice that didn't happen before they came to office, five years ago. And the reason it didn't is, and you have to understand the culture and the history of Mexico, um, they made a deal with the narcos and said, look, uh, and they're going to do this again, uh, no killing each other, uh, no drugs in the country uh, of Mexico. There are drugs, but there's not much compared to the United States, that's for sure. And um, and you conduct your lives like normal human beings. And the reason that they look at it that way is simple. It's a matter of survival. They say, look, we wouldn't be selling this stuff to Americans unless they were willing to buy it. They want it. And so 
If they stopped buying it, we'd be out of business. So all we're doing is filling a need. Now, why do they tolerate it in certain sectors in Mexico? The biggest generator of income is the oil business in Mexico run by the government. It's $42 billion in profit a year. And guess what's number two? Narcotics. $32 billion a year. And then you drop down the line and you've got $22 billion a year coming from Mexicans who live in the United States and other countries. Money that they send back to their families. Next you have tourism, which has fallen off terribly because of the economy in the United States and the violence in Mexico. That's about 17 billion, down from about 20, 21. So now you see why they turn their head the other way. What if that 42, 32 billion dollars wasn't in Mexico from drug trafficking? What would happen? Well, things would be a lot tougher financially for the country. And so now you understand their justification is saying, look, we're not making those people take those drugs. All we're doing is supplying them. And they feel fully justified. All of the great fortunes of the history of the world have been made in narcotics. You can go back two, 3,000 years. And that's, that's one of the you know, ugly truths out there that a lot of people don't want to talk about, Bob. And, you know, a lot of the problems that Mexico have had over the past couple of decades is a result of, well, similar problems that we have, such as uh, what happened with all these free trade agreements like NAFTA, CAFTA, GATT. I mean, that basically ruined their agriculture industry. And it's just, you know, we have to accept, you know, our share of the blame for what happened down there. Well, they, the only product that they don't or can't compete against is the corporate farms in America that produce corn. Uh, but, and that's a very staple in Mexico. They can make tortillas with it and, uh, and so on. And, uh, but other than that, they can feed themselves. Uh, one thing about Latin America in South America as well as Mexico, the, the soil is so rich, it's unbelievable. I mean, you make a little hole and put a seed in, and you get a tree next week. It, it's really that powerful. And um, in Mexico, they usually get three crops a year. When you're further north here, they get two. But you go down to Chiapas, and they get four crops a year. So they can feed themselves. They got oil. They don't refine it. It goes, it goes to Texas, and they refine it back, if you can believe that. <laughs> but <clears throat> that's the way they decided to approach it. <clears throat> and their oil will last for a long time because I, I know that the main oil field is uh, depleting rapidly. But they also know that they got goo gobs of oil sitting uh, in, the, in the Gulf of Mexico. And all I have to do is drill it in street deep drilling. It's expensive. To do what they want, it probably cost about $40 billion. And I think they should do it tomorrow morning. And the reason why is they're sitting on about $94 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries, which are paying, you know, 0.07 of 1% or one half of 1%. That's ridiculous. But it's entrapment. Because the U.S. says, well, if you don't buy our paper, we'll make my life miserable for you. And they will. I mean, I've heard that from a number of heads of state, former heads of state, who I've interviewed. Yeah, and then it doesn't help when you have the, the dictator of Texas, Rick Perry, come out, what, a week or so ago talking about, well, maybe, you know, maybe we need to go down there to Mexico and help them with the drug problem. I mean, that, that's basically a, a threat of invasion and war on Mexico. Of course it is. Uh, he, he's, he's dumb. 
And he's also got another a lot of other problems that people don't know about. Mm-hmm. He doesn't chance, stand a chance of uh, no, no, uh, he's getting as president. Yeah, I mean, I've and, been but what he did was he tried to neutralize the um, efforts of Ron Paul, and of course that wasn't successful. But they don't care; they'll pay him off. They'll give him cushy jobs here and there, making millions, and he'll go speak and get paid a hundred thousand dollars for fifteen minutes, that sort of thing. They're all payoffs. Alan yeah, that's, Greenspan's that's... been doing it. It's Paul Volcker, they all do it. And everything, everything's arranged, you know, by the Council on Foreign Relations and, and all their friends. And, you know, that's, that's yet another ugly truth that most Americans, unfortunately, don't know about because of, well, the really crappy education system. Bob, we got about a minute left. How can people get the International Forecaster? Well, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. We publish by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays, about 35 or 40 pages. And we have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. And everything that you need to know each week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. The international, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. You can also go to www.intforecaster.com. That's intforecaster.com. All of you have who have questions, want to send them in. We answer everybody. You want a free copy of either publication, or if you want a copy of our report on gold and silver shares, email us. And that address is Bob B O B at intforecaster.com, bob at intforecaster.com. You can also call toll-free, 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. You can get either copy there, and they have a special offer there, for a free one-year subscription. So if you want to become a subscriber, that's a good place to go. The deal that they have is terrific. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. All right. Bye-bye.